Hi there. Sometimes you will have to make a color balance adjustment to an image that is not optimal for it, such as a low quality JPEG. When I started out with Sarah here, she looks rather yellow, and when I finished with her, she looks quite human. I'm going to show you through a series of adjustments how you can avoid the headaches that might occur from certain complications that arise from trying to do color balance adjustments on uh, certain images, such as low quality JPEGs. Okay, let's begin. First of all, Yes, Sarah is orange, yellow, and we need to fix that. I am going to use a color balance layer to do global adjustments to the color balance. Since the tones I'm concerned about are the highlights and the mid-tones, I'm not going to worry about the shadows. Instead, I'm going to adjust these sliders on the mid-tones and the highlights to achieve something that I think looks uh, natural. I'm going to reset it and show you quickly what I've done. Here we are on the mid-tones, and since she looks rather yellow, I'm going to take the yellow-blue slider and pull it to the right. As you can see, that's introducing too much magenta into the image, so I'm going to take the magenta green slider and also pull that to the right. I'm going to go into the highlights and do the same thing. Yellow-blue, magenta green. I'm going to fiddle with the cyan red slider a little bit, and what you want to do is just go back and forth between the two and fiddle until you find something that looks right which is what I've done. Okay, so this is where I am at um, after I've done this first layer. And it looks almost there, but it's not quite ready as far as I'm concerned. However, I cannot actually adjust the layer anymore with this current adjustment layer because the sliders won't go any farther to the right, for example. So I am going to create a new one right on top of it. and. What I've actually done is masked this to isolate it only to the face because otherwise it would introduce color shifts to the hair and to the wood and to her clothes that I don't want. I just want it to be isolated to the face. I've done the same thing. I've left the shadows alone and I've gone and I've adjusted the midtones and the highlights to achieve what I think is natural. Whenever you're working with skin tones, it's a good idea to have a reference to show what that person's skin tone actually looks like. It is very difficult trying to guess skin tones because everybody's skin tone is different from one another, and so there's almost no such thing as a correct skin tone. As you can see here, I've got a picture of little Sarah that has a nice, lovely skin tone, and this is what I'm using to help me get the correct tone. If you don't have a reference image, just guess as best as you can. Okay, now that we're zoomed in, we can see that we have some more problems. Look at all this color noise. When you're using a low quality image, you get introduced a whole lot of these little dots of color that have absolutely nothing to do with the image and make it look terrible. And you want to remove those. So go to your background layer and duplicate it. Now go to Filter, Noise, Reduce Noise. Now we're not going to worry about the texture, uh, the, the actual texture grain noise that we can see here. We're just going to worry about the color noise because that's all that we are paying attention to in this tutorial. So set your strength at 10, preserve details to 100%, reduce color noise to 100%, and sharpen details 0%. Remove JPEG artifact is negligible with these settings, so don't worry about it. As you can see here uh, with the full screen preview, all of this color noise that we had before is gone, and that's what we want. I'm going to press cancel and I'm going to activate the layer that I had already done before with these changes. Okay, so now it's looking a little better. However, unfortunately, there are still some issues here. We've done some global adjustments, but there are um, problems that are local, such as these fingers here, which because the image was shot with flash and these fingers are much closer to the camera than the face is, they've become overexposed and had quite a significant color shift. Not only that, but there are parts of Sarah's face that have the correct skin tone, but then there are parts that don't, and we need to adjust those so that they all look similar. I'll show you. Here on the nose, there is a yellowish green tint. Around the edges of the face here, on both sides, there's a greenish gray tint that looks quite dead. In between the eyebrows, it's a little too magenta, as well as around the eyes. Around the lips here is the same whitish, uh, or grayish, um, greenish tone that doesn't look good. 
Now, her cheeks are nice and rosy, which is great because we love a kid with rosy cheeks. However, we need to take the rest of these inconsistent areas and we need to make them match everything else and look the way we want it to. And the way we are going to do that is we are going to paint in our own skin tone. So create a new layer on top of your other ones and set it to, uh, set the blending mode to color. Now I'm not going to do that just yet. First I'm going to show you what happens if I don't. Okay, so I'm going to grab my paintbrush here and the color that I've chosen is a nice pink fleshy color that I think will work well. Okay, I'm going to start painting. As you can see, it's just throwing the color down on top of everything and that's not working. So if you set your adjustment, um, your blending mode to color, then it will ignore all the luminosity and only throw the color down. You can begin then to apply this to all the areas that you need to. However, as we can see, it's a little too strong, so we're going to lower the opacity of this layer down to something that's a little more subtle. Now you can go about and paint in on all these areas that we needed to even out. I'm going to delete this layer and show you the one that I've already done. Okay, here it is. It's very subtle. If you keep an eye on the edges of the face here and the nose, you can see the differences that I've introduced. Very subtle. You don't even want it to be noticed at all because this problem shouldn't even have occurred in the first place. Now, one thing I did notice, however, was that this skin tone that I've chosen was actually a little too pink for what I would like. So I introduced a hue saturation adjustment layer to fix that. And the most important thing to keep in mind about this layer is this little arrow here that points down to the layer right below it. And that is called a clipping mask. What that does is it tells the adjustment layer to only apply to the layer directly below it. And if you do not have a clipping mask applied, then it will apply to every single layer below it. And if that happens, this is what it looks like. No good. In this case, you only want this hue saturation adjustment layer to be applied just to that skin that you've painted in. This is the button here on CS4 to apply an adjustment layer. However, if you're on a previous version, then what you want to do is point in between these two layers here and hold your Alt or Option key and click. And this will either apply it or remove it. Okay. Now when I'm using this, um, this adjustment layer, I can adjust the hue to whatever I want. I can make her look purple. I can make her look dead. But really what I want to do is find the most convincing skin tone that I think works, and that's what I've done. Okay, so now we are going to apply these changes and do the exact same thing to these fingers here. We're going to make a new layer and set it to color, and we are going to define our own skin tone. Now I'm going to add a curves adjustment layer to darken it down and compensate for that overexposure. Now, I need to tell you something that is the most important thing to keep in mind when using a curves adjustment layer to make luminosity adjustments, and that is the fact that the curves layer will affect the color as well. I'm going to make a layer over top of everything and show you what happens. Say I'm going to darken it all down. As you can see, this has introduced some pretty funky color shifts that I don't want. If I just want to darken it down, I want the same tones that I had to begin with. And that is why I change my blending mode here to luminosity and that will discard all the color information and only apply the luminosity changes. This is very important because the color tones that I had below are now being preserved and that is what you want to keep in mind whenever you're using a curves adjustment layer to make a luminosity adjustment. Okay, to finish off I'm going to add one more luminosity layer here and brighten it up a bit because I like the way it makes it look nice and clean and after this we're all done. We have turned Sarah here from a fairly yellow young lady to a fairly presentable one. Now, all of these adjustments might seem a little overwhelming, but once you figure them out and got your workflow down, it's extremely easy and you can make uh, color tone adjustments to any image regardless of the complications that might spring up. Thank you very much for your time.